Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is Blade Rondo by Jap Anime Games and by Domina Games. This is a one to two player game, which means there's a solo mode and a head to head one versus one mode. And it takes roughly 15 minutes to play for ages 12 and up. In the game Blade Rondo, you're going to be equipping yourself with Sordians. These are characters from myth and legend and your imagination that you want to use to battle against your opponent. Your objective? To reduce their HP of 15 down to zero before they do it to you. The game plays in roughly eight rounds or less and sometimes more and you're going to do a sort of draft once you've got the hang of the game. You'll be having a certain number of cards to start with, selecting seven and then beginning the game with cards in front of you that start on the field. Blade Rondo plays kind of like Hearthstone or Magic the Gathering, kind of like a TCG style game, uh, but it's, a, your own, it's own unique kind of concoction. It's definitely closer to Hearthstone, where you're going to be getting voltage as opposed to mana, one at a time increasing ever steadily from round to round that you can utilize to cast spells, whether it be for attack, defense, utilizing a secret support card that's kind of like a Yu-Gi-Oh trap card, or even summoning minions to aid you in your um, quest to defeat your opponent. In the solo mode, you're playing by yourself, and you're playing against these uh, characters of myth and legend that have a unique initi initiative level that can basically turn online at a certain level and start dealing with you as you're trying to reduce their HP down to zero. We'll talk about the setup for the game, how to play, and then of course, my review, whether you should pick up the game, Blade Rondo. To start the game, the first thing you do is you get both player boards and you place them adjacent to each other so that the attack, voltage, and defense portions are connected to each other. Each player will sit on opposite ends and they're going to get their first cards to lay down face up adjacent to their game board next to their HP total, leaving some room for additional cards to be played. If you're playing first, you're just going to get an, an, an armor card and an enkindle card. If you're playing second, you're going to get an Enkindle, an Armor, and the Inquicken card, which is a limited card that you can only use once. Additionally, on your board, you're going to get three dice, Attack, Voltage, and Defense. All of these are set to zero, except for the second player's Attack, which is set to one. Take your HP marker, which looks like this little see-through uh, beeble, bubble, bubble, maybe, and place it on 15. That marks your HP, and you'll see the track here that will go down to zero, indicating you've lost the game. There are additional cards in the game. If you're playing a two player, you'll set aside the white cards. You do not need them. And if you're playing um, the base mode of the game, they have unique cards that you'll select from. There's 10 of each uh, and you'll randomly select seven. And then you'll play with those seven cards for the game. Then the next round, you'll actually take those 10 cards and select seven. And for the base mode of the game, you'll just shuffle all of the black cards together, deal out 15 to each player, and then select seven of those, and you'll play, proceed through two rounds of gameplay. So depending on how advanced you are, determines what type of cards you're gonna be getting in the game. I suggest, actually, maybe a first, you don't really need to play the base mode. If you've played any TCGs before, just simply shuffle all the black cards together, deal out 15 of these cards uh, to each player, and then have them select seven for their play roster for the round. From there, you're ready to begin the game. You have your three or two cards face up, your boards and your seven cards, and you're good to go. Playing the game is as simple as setting it up. The first thing that you do is you choose the first player to go. They're the player that has the two cards face up and not the three, and you're going to increase their voltage level by one. Now, typically that's going to be zero to start with, but it'll progress throughout round to round, and it'll go to one here, so zero to one, and now I can utilize that voltage to play a card. Whether it be one of the seven cards in hand, or one of the two cards I have face up on the field. Cards that you play are going to be moved up one uh, row area from where they are, or if you're playing from your hand, you'll just place them in the front row. And typically speaking, the first card you'll be playing in the game on the first turn is in Kindle. I'll move that card up, it has a cost of one, which is located in the top left-hand side of the card, and I'll do the effect. This effect is to increase my attack by one. So I'll increase that from zero to one. I've spent all my voltage, I've got no more voltage left, thusly I'm going to end my turn. And when you end your turn, you refresh every card. Any card that is a limited card, which will have an L underneath the name on the left hand side, is going to be discarded. If it's not limited, it'll either go back in your hand if you played it from your hand, or it will return back to the spot on the field it was originally located on if it was one of the two cards that were face up on the field to start the game with. After that, you're going to pass. The next player is going to get a chance to go. And the way that works is they're going to also increase their voltage by one. Then they can play cards. In this case here, maybe I'll once again play in Kindle, which will thusly give me one attack. Uh, but in this case, because I was second player, I started with one, so now I'll go to two. Then I could also, if I wanted to, play in Quicken. 
And Quicken is a limited card that will give you plus one voltage until end of turn, but it'll actually make you reduce your voltage down. So sometimes cards will say until end of turn, in which case that's the only time in which your die will ever actually move. You don't even have to actually move your die, you can just remember it in that way. Thusly, whenever you do move a die, it will actually be permanent, and the other ones can just be until end of turn, which you'll utilize to play cards from your hand. And in this case, I could play something like this guy here, my Illuminating Etrude, and it gives me the following bonded effect. When either player takes damage, you may discard this card to increase or decrease the amount of damage taken by one. Uh, but otherwise, I can choose to hold and keep this card. I'll end my turn, I'll move my Enkindle down, and I will pass to the next player. They'll increase their voltage to two now. Thus, they can play even better cards, and they'll look through and see what they want to play. Like, for instance, they can play Dancing Dagger. Dancing Dagger simply says that uh, after resolving this effect, you can pay one extra voltage to attack again. Whenever you attack in this game, especially with a physical attack, you'll look at the attack that you have. That will be your attack. Then you will subtract it from your opponent's defense. In my case, it would be zero. And you would reduce the marker of their HP by the difference, which is one. This card is not a card that goes away. It's not um, a card that is removed with the L. So it will go back to my hand, not limited. And of course, that would end my turn. Next player's turn, increasing their voltage by one. Uh, going to two there, look at the cards that I have. Ooh, this is a good one. So I'll actually use my Quicken this time. So I'll go from two to three. I'll discard this card as, or I'll, I guess I'll play this card face up in front. It will go away at the end of the turn. And I'll cast Hastening Rondo, pushing my voltage to three. So I had two, gain one for the end of turn, which goes to three. I spend the three, this lets me increase, and I'm going to end my turn. This is a limited card, so it will go away forever. And then Quicken is also a limited card but now I've increased my voltage to the first players. It's pretty nice. And that's how the game will go. You'll go back and forth playing cards. Increase your voltage, play cards equal to the amount of voltage that you have, try and deal damage to your opponent and reduce them down to zero. Each card has a number of different voltage costs and the highest voltage cost that I have seen is eight. Some cards will simply straight up kill your opponent while others are going to ignore defense. Magical attacks will go through defense and will only count towards whatever the card says. And you have unique cards as well. Some cards are like face down cards. These are cards that you can play like this for one voltage and will interact with your opponent on their turn whenever they do something that makes the card get triggered. And some cards are summoning effects. These cards will actually go to the side of your board, which will allow you to utilize them on the next turn, typically to attack your opponent and get them down to zero HP. That's the basic idea of the game, as a straight up back and forth Hearthstone-like card game that has a bit of a draft formation and is basically allowing you to kind of create your own custom seven card hand with the cards allotted to you each and every game. Win two games out of three and you're the winner. Blade Rondo is a game where picking your cards matters just as much as playing your cards kind of creating your own strategy with the cards available to you will become very, very important in the game as you select them to utilize them on certain plays during your turn. There's a variety of different cards and you're never gonna get the same 15 cards more than once. And so you're always gonna have unique sets of cards that you can draft from in order to create the perfect hand of seven. Additionally, there's always two cards you're gonna be getting. There's the card that gives you armor based on the amount of voltage that you spend. So if you gain three voltage, you can spend all three to increase your defense to three. And it's a permanent bonus defense of three, protecting you from all physical attacks that don't ignore defense. Whereas in Kindle is a card that's going to increase your attack by one every time you activate it. Round one, you can go to, to one attack. Round two, you can go to two attack, then three, then four, and thusly increasing your attack, allowing you to utilize attack cards that are in your hand to affect your opponent, reducing their HP. This is a quick game. Uh, whereas round one and round two are kind of slow, straightforward. You're gonna either use in Kindle, maybe a special card in your hand as a face down card. You're eventually gonna pump up your stats, utilize your attack cards, and reduce your HP of your opponent down to zero. This game comes down to the wire each and every time. It's usually one round difference that makes 
makes the difference of this game. And so you're constantly trying to determine the best plays each and every time to utilize either for that turn or for the next turn. Determine what your opponent has drafted and how their play style is going to be based on the cards that they have previously played. Cards that are face down have a variety of effects, whether it be to prevent an attack if they can't pay an extra voltage, or to steal an attack that they've played, thusly allowing them to not play it anymore, regardless of whether it is limited or not. And using limited cards, the cards that you can only use once a game, to the best possible advantage you have. Cards that are limited could involve either utilizing a health gain of plus four for a certain number of voltage. It could be a card that sends out a minion to do 10 damage to your opponent on the next turn. Could be cards that give you additional voltage, etc, etc. There are a bunch of different varieties of cards that you can use to combine in this game to create the best set of seven cards possible. What's also cool about Blade Rondo is there are multiple sets of this game. You can actually play with additional copies of the game. You can either play them kind of limited in each in their own, where you just need one copy of the game to play, or you can entangle them. You can attach additional sets to play, shuffle the cards together, and then deal out certain amounts. I like the idea of a house rule where you can actually draft sets of cards where you put 30 together, and each player just picks one going back and forth until you have seven and discard the rest. But really, it's kind of up to you. It's, it's a mishmash of different cards that you can kind of stylize to your gameplay. The idea is always very simple, though. Your objective is to reduce your opponent's HP first before they do, and it's always going to come down to the wire, which is my favorite aspect of the game. That being said, there are moments in time where you're going to realize that you played poorly, you made some poor decisions in the game, and thusly the turn before you're about to lose, you're going to know it, it's going to feel kind of bad, and you're going to be like, ah, I wish I did this differently or played this card differently. Utilizing the benefits of cards in your hand based on what your opponent has played, if there are face down cards in the field, notice that these are cards that could potentially stop your attack, increase your opponent's defense, and that kind of thing. And so you have to play around those effects, otherwise you can lose valuable resources. Each voltage in this game matters. Each way you spend the voltage is extremely important. You utilize one turn poorly, don't spend or spend or overspend on something, play a card that gives you a bunch of defense and get hit by a magical attack, it can be detrimental to your gameplay and thus end up making you lose the game. The game is beautiful artwork. I love it. It's got that beautiful Japanese animation style artwork. It's very dark. It's very luminous. It's kind of broody. Each of the characters are unique and feel good to gameplay. Whereas the theme is kind of like you're gathering swords, swordsmen? What are they guys called? Swordians to your gameplay and your like imagination battle. It's fine. Not a big theme to me. Mainly just dropping down dudes or attacks to fight your opponent and reduce their HP, but it has this beautiful Hearthstone effect where if you don't want to play an online game of Hearthstone, you want to play with somebody near you, this is the perfect kind of similar game to that type of a game. And the fact that you never lose mana or spend it in the same way, you're always increasing from round to round, it's very Hearthstone-esque in that way. You have cards that function like weapons kind of or summoning effects that attack your opponent and it's very straightforward. Adding additional cards is a nice aspect, and then of course the solo mode. The solo mode has a, a plethora of unique characters that you can play against. Each of them are going to have a number of attack and defense they start with. They'll have initiative, which is the turn they start or activate in the game. And then they have a set of abilities along with a passive that they will do. So maybe this girl here, Gauntletica, she has initiative five, so she won't swing at you until turn five. When she does, she'll have eight attack, and she always has three defense. And then she'll go through all of her effects here. The first one is the Muse attacks increase by two. So she goes from eight to 10. Uh, then she does a physical attack to you. Then she does another physical attack that can't be responded to. And she always has a response that says, if her life falls to zero, it'll actually go to two just once in a game. So where this character might not activate soon, it is a card that once it does activate, you're gonna have to start, you have to prepare kind of beforehand to reduce her HP. And it, it'll function just like this. You'll actually turn the boards over and have one of the muses flip up. That is the character card you're dealing with. The initiative determines what turn she starts activating on, and you'll just follow the steps from top to bottom and always remembering the passive as you go along, just like a player reducing her down to zero HP. Uh, there is a ton of characters in this game that you can fight against. There's a, a bunch. And so you can 
from round to round, just switch them up, one different one to a new different one, thusly giving yourself different styles of gameplay. Do you want to increase your defense because this is a physical character? Do you want to work on increasing your attack to deal with the character based on the cards you have available to you to reduce their HP before they activate? It's really going to be up to you, thus giving you uh, a unique solo player kind of Hearthstone game that you can jump into and play on the tabletop. I really like this game. I wasn't sure what to expect from this type of a game, um, and I've seen a lot of games that are similar to this type of a game. This one does it very, very well. It feels good because it's always close. Even the solo mode plays well. I feel like I have a chance. I feel like it can be challenging. And sometimes if I pick the right cards and play them well, I feel like I've dominated them. So I have kind of, a, it, it's, it's, it's a unique bag of fun when it comes to the solo player game. And then the two player game is just always down to the wire, regardless. Um, each card doesn't feel weaker or stronger than another card. There are cards that are better, but the costs are higher. And typically speaking, a card that says pay eight voltage to literally defeat your opponent is great. But most of the time the game ends before turn eight. So it could be a dead card that you add to your draft into your hand, where you could have utilized something that was better from the card pool that you had to then defeat your opponent. Artwork is solid, quality of all the pieces are solid, standard dice, a little, little nicer than the standard dice I would say. Life point marker is pretty straightforward, it's one of those things that you put in like your fish tank, you'll see them in fish tanks in the bottom of the tank. But it does exactly what it needs to do. Enough cards for replayability, and even if you feel like you don't have enough, you can always pick up another game and add to it. I really wish it played four players. I wish there was a way, in fact, maybe I'll even attempt to do it so that I could play four players and see how it works, where you can go and place one, two, three, four, and kind of do a Commander-esque Magic the Gathering version of like a Hearthstone game. I don't know how it would work though, so I haven't tested this theory out, but that's the one thing I'd like. Maybe I have to ban a few cards to make it fair. But other than just adding to the player count, this is an excellent game. I really enjoy it, and if this is the type of game you're looking for, I strongly suggest you pick it up. If you're not looking for a TCG-style game that plays like Hearthstone, it's not going to be for you. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Link is in the description. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review of the game Blade Rondo by Japanime Games and by Damina Games. If you're interested in picking it up, there's a link, like I said, down below in the description. If you feel spicy, if you feel like you think we deserve a subscription, go ahead and put that subscribe button and hit the bell notification button for more video updates, more content, reviews, just like this one here. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to having my Swordians defeat yours next time.